Hallelujah, Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. We magnify your name. Lord, we bless you, all of us in Jesus' sanctuary today, with declaring how great you are, how wonderful you are. Thank you for the gift of another life. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust in you. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to the last Sunday in the first half of this year. Our keeper and our God, magnificent God. Thank you for being there, our shield and our buckler. Lord, we thank you for all the testimonies that you have given unto us in the sanctuary. And Lord, we thank you that truly this month you are moving us forward. We are leaping up and we are attaining our destiny in the name of Jesus. Therefore, Father, we ask, O oh God, that in your mercy, as we go into your word today, your word will nourish our hearts. Your word will nourish our spirits in the name of Jesus. Lord, Holy Father, we are asking that you speak to us. Let your word come directly and expressly into every heart, into every home, in the name of Jesus. Let your word empower. Let your word, my Father God, sustain us, even as we look unto you, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, for this morning. All glory and all honor be unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, sanctuary. God bless you all. It's such a wonderful day to be here this morning in our various homes, worshiping the Lord and giving him all the glory and giving him all the praise. He's such a faithful God. He's our good God and he's our kind God. We really, really just want to say thank you unto God in the name of Jesus. We thank God for all the testimonies we have had in the last two weeks. God blessed us with five babies. In the last one week, five babies. We give God all the glory. And very soon your testimony will be next in Jesus' name. This month, we've been talking about moving forward. And all the messages have been particularly enriching. I want to encourage you, if you were not at Faith Clinic last Thursday, Thursday the 25th of June, please, I want to encourage you, get the CD or go online and download the message by Professor Amam. Very powerful message, and I'm sure that the Lord will also bless you through it as we go into the word of the Lord this morning. Choir, by the way, God bless you for that song in the name of Jesus. We're going to be taking our text from Philippians 3, 12 to 14, which is our theme for this month. Not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And this is Apostle Paul speaking. So what exactly do we mean? All month we've heard about moving forward, going forward, making progress, you know, hindrances and things that could stop us. But what exactly are you moving forward into? Have you seen the way ahead? You can't move forward unless you know where you're going. You know, Thomas had a similar dilemma in John 14, 5 to 6. John chapter 14, 5 to 6. Thomas had a same dilemma. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. And how can we know the way? It was a genuine question. And Jesus said to him, I am the way. And he's saying the same thing to all of us in the sanctuary today. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It simply means you will have to trust God to bring you into the new things he has in store for you and for us as a church. Without God, you can never really make progress. Yes, you may be moving, but you can never really make the kind of progress that God is asking us to. That same scripture in the New Living Translation, NLT, in the New Living Translation, Philippians 3, 13 to 14, Paul says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. Don't ever assume that you have arrived. He says, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. You can't stay in the past. You can't be driving with the rear view mirror. Then verse 14, he says, I press on to reach the end of the race 
and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. He says, I press on to reach the end. That's the goal, to receive the prize. And God will help us in the name of Jesus. But you see, moving forward means that you are running the race on your own track. You are moving forward on your own lane. You are not jumping lanes. You are not doing what somebody else is doing. You are following God all the way. Forget the past. So this morning, a few things, a few factors that I believe would help us to move forward. A few things that you and I need to do to give us the focus and the understanding and the pushing forward that we need to do. Number one is personal desire. Please retweet it to yourself. I must have a personal desire to move forward. What is personal desire? Your own goal, not what somebody else is doing. There's a man called Nicodemus in John chapter 3. The Bible says Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. He was a well-respected church leader, but he didn't know the way forward. A leader, but he doesn't know where he's going. So a blind man leading the blind, he didn't know where he was going, but he came to Jesus at night. He had a desire. And when Jesus Christ said to him that you can't enter into the kingdom of God unless you are born again, the man was saying, excuse me, must I go back into my mother's womb? He didn't understand it until Jesus explained it to him. And Nicodemus was able to move forward in life because the Bible says at the end when Jesus was crucified, it was Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea who came to bury the body of Jesus. It meant he had moved forward in his faith. What about Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19? Zacchaeus was living a life of hopelessness and greed. He was very wealthy, but it was an empty life. He was determined to change, so he decided to move forward. And how did he move forward? He climbed a tree. He had a personal desire. He didn't think, oh, people would be laughing at me. Hey, see, rich man. He was short, short of stature, short of ideas, short of favor, short of respect. But one day, God lengthened his life. God made him a giant in the faith. Because Nicodemus said, if I've taken anything from anybody, I restore it fourfold. And whatever is left, I give it to the poor. You must have a personal desire. What about the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5? She had this problem for 12 years. Excuse me, sir. 12 seconds, 12 minutes, 12 hours, 12 weeks, 12 days, 12 months. 12 years of pain is a long time. So this woman, one day when she had heard about Jesus, she said, I'm moving forward into health. I'm moving forward into good health. So this woman, she kept saying to herself, if only I can touch the hem of his garment. And she didn't stop until she achieved her aim. She had a personal desire. What about the widow of the prophet in 2 Kings chapter 4? She was determined to move forward from poverty. So it wasn't when the creditors came and she folded and said, hey, I don't know what I can do so you can have my sons and take them into slavery. No, she cried out for help and God helped her. That same God is alive today and that same God will do same and much more for you in the name of Jesus. If you want to move forward, you must have a personal hunger. You must have a personal desire. You must pursue it diligently. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It says they hunger, they are thirsting for it. They are recurring appetites. You must focus on your desire to move forward in any matter that God has placed upon your heart. Over 10 years ago, in fact, more than that, maybe like 15 years now, because the Baba is in his 80s, a man of God that I know very well, retired from public service. I can't remember the age at which Baba retired. And Baba decided to go and do law in, in the UK. The man graduated when he was 70. He's about 85 or so now. And we were all wondering that after you had had a wonderful, glorious career in the secular world, you now went to read law. You were reading law with the age mates of your grandchildren. He said that's their problem that he had always had a personal desire to become a lawyer. So there's nothing stopping you if you have that personal desire to move forward, whether academically or in ministry or in business, even in your marriage to become a better spouse, 
or as a parent or as a child, whatever it is. This man, I believe that he even went ahead to get a master's because he had a personal desire. Without a personal desire, a man can't move forward. He would just be going right. He will be moving, but it will be in circles. Number two, what would help you to move forward? The grace of God. You need the grace of God that helps a man to forget the past. Past failures, past achievements. You must be willing to let go of horrible past memories. Past bitterness, anger, the wrongs perpetuated against you. You know, several times in the course of this week, I've had the devil, or last week because today is Sunday, the devil kept reminding me of things I'd done in the past. You know, how I used to be this, how I used to be that. But to the glory of God, that person is dead. The me that now lives is a child of God. All things have passed away. Everything has become new. If I don't forget the past, I have no business being here. Because I know how terrible my past was. But there is a God in heaven who helps us to forget the mistakes of the past. Paul had to forget his past. He was an accomplice to murder. All the people he had hauled to prison for the sake of the gospel when he was giving his account in Acts chapter 26. He says many of them he dragged to prison. Many he committed to be killed. He says he had to forget the past. Somewhere in Galatians he says he has wronged no man. I said, hey, Paul, you have wronged no man. But you see, it takes God. If you don't forget your past, you can't move forward. But you see, we are not only talking about forgetting past failures. We are talking of past accomplishments. The things that God has helped you to do. If you raised the dead yesterday, that was yesterday. Tomorrow you should be able to raise 50 dead people. So we are not just talking about um, forgetting past failures and disappointments. But we are talking about forgetting even the things, you know, that have seemed to be the, the enemy of good, the enemy of best. Like General Overseer told us like two weeks ago, the enemy of the best of your life is the good you had done before. Because if you park your car there, you are not likely to move forward. Joseph was a man in Genesis 50 verse 20 when his brothers told him, how, how sorry they were. He says, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. So Joseph didn't dwell on the evil that his brothers had done to him. He forgave them willingly. Are you willing to forgive? Please, I'm not saying you are not hurt. I'm not saying you are not offended. I'm not saying bad things have not happened to you. I'm not saying you haven't been cheated or abused. But are you willing to move forward from there into the good things that God has for you? You know, something I never, I, I still don't even fully understand something. But every time that I read or think about something, God gives me another perspective of that man. That man lost everything up to his eyes. He lost everything. He lost position. He was grinding corn in the prison of his enemies. That will not happen to you in Jesus' name. The people he had conquered, he became their servant. You will not become a servant in the name of Jesus. But you know what? When Samson landed in prison, he began to retrace his steps. He was in prison, quite okay. He was bound. He was suffering. He was in shame. He was still blind. But then he had to forget his terrible failures and he began to seek God again. Because the Bible says in Judges 16 verse 22 that his hair began to grow again. His hair was a sign of his covenant with God. So the fact that he began to seek God, the fact that he began to see God in his situation that God have messed up. Have you messed up in life? There's hope for you. He didn't just die a shameful death. Yes, he died, you know, breaking down the walls. But it wasn't like, oh, Samson died without honor. Because the Bible still referred to him in Hebrews 11. He says, and time will not permit me to begin to recount of Samson. So God still honored him in his death. There is hope for you in the name of Jesus. Forget the past, the good things, the things God has helped you to achieve. All the miracles. Forget how you have walked, how you have labored and all that and begin afresh. You need to forget everything 
and press into the new things that God has for you. Number three that you need is diligence. At the vigil, we talked about diligence. Diligence, Paul calls it in verse 13 and 14. He says, reaching for that goal. He says, I press toward. It is a stretching. You are stretching for it. You are expanding yourself. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 says, study to show yourself approved. Another version says, bend your every effort to show yourself approved unto God. Follow the path outlined by God for you. That path sometimes may take you through the valley, sometimes through the mountains, sometimes through the valley of the shadow of death. But you know something I like about Psalm 23 verse 4, that the Lord opened my eyes to see as I listened to a man of God minister recently. He says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's a walk. You are just walking through. He says, I walk through it. Not that I'm sitting down in the valley of the shadow of death. No. Though I may walk through poverty, though I may walk through sickness, though I may walk through marital challenge, though I may walk through my children being in rebellion, it is a walking through. You are coming out of it. You are not parking your car there. He says, though I walk through it, brethren, it's a walk. Because when you walk through it, you are moving forward. You are moving into something new. But you must be diligent. In Hebrews 12 verse 1. Hebrews 12 verse 1. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run. I like that word. Run, run. Tell yourself, even if you are home at home, alone at home, look in the mirror and tell the person you are seeing, run with endurance the race that is set before us. That is, you are moving forward into that race. You must rouse yourself to take the necessary steps. Don't sit there and just say, hey, ah, what is all this? No, get up. It's a good morning. It's a good day to live. It's a good season to live. Don't say, oh, I wish I lived in so-so year. God knows this is your season to thrive. That is why you are still alive. You have, if you had finished everything that he wanted you to do on this side of eternity, he would have taken you to heaven. Rouse yourself to take the necessary steps. It will require discipline. It will require tenacity. It will require hard work. It will require endurance in the face of opposition. Look at David and what happened about the story in Ziklag. In 1 Samuel 30 verse 8. We all know that story. Everything had been taken. Their wives, their children, property. But in verse 8, even the people that Dan, um, David was leading, they had said they were going to stone him. But he encouraged himself in the Lord. And then in verse 8, David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? In other words, shall I move forward? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, pursue for you will surely overtake them and without fail recover all. So you are going to say with me, in the name of Jesus I will pursue I will overtake and without fail I shall recover all. I recover all in the name of Jesus Christ. A man that is moving forward cannot be slothful. A man that is moving forward cannot procrastinate in whatever area that God wants you to move forward. What if David was like one of those 200? There were 600 of them, but 200 said they were too tired to go on. What if he was one of those 200? But he pursued. A man that is going to make it in life moving forward must be diligent. In Romans 12 verse 11. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. He says we must not be lagging in diligence. Don't be lagging in diligence. Be fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Even when it's not convenient. Even when it seems you are the only one. So that you may be able to say at the end of your race. 
at the end of your walk here on this earth, in your secular life, in your ministry, in your spiritual life, in your marriage, in your business, you will be able to say, like Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7, he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So shall it be for us in the name of Jesus. Number four, factor that would help you to move forward. You must grow in humility. You must grow in humility. It's in such short supply these days. You know, we want to hear our own voices. We want everybody to see your face. That's why you do, you know, a selfie. And then you take a photograph of yourself swallowing eba and apple or whatever else it is that you eat. You know, and we just want to be noticed, generally doing our own stuff and showing up. But that's not the way of a man that is going forward. Um, my daddy loves to say, um, the elders have a saying. I'm a young girl, I don't know what the elders say. But I know that sometime, as we, as we were growing up, the adults would tell us, and I'll try to translate it, that if you have harvested you know, your yams, or you have had a bountiful harvest. Don't go out shouting to everybody, come and see the harvest, yo, come and see. No, you keep quiet and you thank God. Why? Because pride leads to a fall. The louder you are, the harder it is for that man to fall. We are not to shop. The Bible says, in all things, let your moderation be known to all men. In James chapter 4, verse 6, James 4, 6, he says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The man who will move forward must be ready to take instructions or corrections from whoever God will send. God can send anybody. He can send your house help. Look, look at Naaman. The only way Neman was going to get his miracle was because he listened to his house self. Some of us, we look down on people and you think, what does he have? What does he know? How much has he achieved? You can never tell who God will send to you to warn you. Look at Balaam. No human being could speak to him. It, it took a donkey, a, a dumb donkey. In fact, the dumbest of the animals to speak to him. I pray that for you, it won't take God to use your dog to tell you you are going the wrong way in the name of Jesus. So a man that God is going to help to move forward, you must remain humble. God can send anybody to give you an instruction. He can send anybody to, you know, correct you. And you must take the correction in good faith. Don't say, who is he to talk to me? No. We must identify and deal with weaknesses. Everybody has one. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 12, one, that the weight that so easily besets us. Don't brag about your strength and your achievements. Give the glory and praise to God. And you should be able to say, Hitherto the Lord has helped me. Let him that boast. Let him that talks. Let him speak in the name of the Lord. And then, because of our time, I'm just going to take the last one. It's not the last one here, but to keep to time. We must keep God at the center of it all. If you are going to move forward, it's only God. You can't achieve it by yourself. Look at Daniel. Great man of God. We are see everybody, you want, we want to name our sons Daniel. But it's not just to name them Daniel. Or if you are called Daniel, you must imbibe his qualities. You must imbibe his characters. The time we met Daniel, the first thing that we heard him, the Bible says Daniel, in Daniel 1.8, Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself. That's the bottom line. Keeping God at the center of it all. Keep, he kept moving with God even in a foreign land. He outlasted five Babylonian kings. He had a long and fulfilling career. Even his enemies had this to say about him in Daniel 6.5. His enemies were so incensed against him that they had to say, this man said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Is that your testimony? Can people say of a truth you are a Christian? That if you are caught open, will every cell in your body bear that letter J? J standing for Jesus and not Jezebel. 
What will be your testimony? We must keep our focus on God. Jesus also said in Luke 9 verse 62, Luke 9 verse 62, he says, He that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. In conclusion tonight, in conclusion this morning, the, bro the prodigal son, familiar story in Luke 15, 17 to 20, that's where I'll focus on. He had taken several steps backward into loss, into shame, into hunger. In fact, he lost, if you could say a man lost everything, he not only lost everything, he was in the minus. Because when you begin to live with pigs, then you know that a man's life has really, really gone down. But one day he made a quality decision. He came to his senses. Luke 15, 17 to 20. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here I am, dying of hunger. Brethren, hunger today may not just be of food. It may be of favor. It may be of love. It may be of peace. It may be of healing. It may be of a right standing with God. He says, I will go home to my father. Our heavenly father is loving. And say, Father, I have sinned against you both heaven and you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he came home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, you know, I like that. He says, while he was still a long way off, the father had been waiting for him to move forward and his father saw him coming. Do you know what that meant? The father was on a lookout every day. Every morning, the father would have been there, years waiting. When is my son going to come to his senses? And the father recognized him. He recognized him in that filth. He recognized him in that ungodliness. He recognized him in that shame. Brethren, that boy didn't have a shower. In fact, there was no opportunity to have a shower. He left a rich man. He came back in, 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 in rags. But the father loved him. The father welcomed him back. The father was filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. If you read throughout the whole of Proverbs, it says that every father's heart is glad when his son takes the right decision. This morning... We want to gladden the heart of our Father as members of Jesus' sanctuary and whoever else may be watching us online to gladden the heart of our Heavenly Father and to take that decision to move forward into doing what is right and to move forward into living for what is right. Will you make that decision today? Lost son, lost daughter, you are not a goat, you are a sheep, but you have missed your way. Can you take that right decision? Have that desire to come back to God. If you want to give your life to Jesus this morning, or you want to reconnect with God, you made some real bad decisions, but our God is merciful. Will you pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, I have made many mistakes and I have come short of your glory. But this morning, I reconnect with you. I am willing to move forward and to leave sin behind, to leave ungodliness behind, to move forward into your glory, to move forward into your power. Almighty God, this morning, please accept me. Accept me as your child. Let your love and compassion wash over me. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus and write my name in the book of life. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you've made that decision, please, you'll see some numbers scrolling on your screen. You can call any of our counseling lines or just dial 0700 JSP, RCCG JSP, Masha, and the Lord will hear you as we pray for you, not only for salvation. If you are in need of counseling or whatever it is, just go to 0700 JSP Masha and somebody will be waiting to pick your call. The rest of us, we're ready to pray. Three quick prayer points in the name of Jesus. First of all, you are saying, my father, I pray that today I will know Christ the more. Cause me to hunger and to thirst for you in the name of Jesus. Almighty Father, we are asking this morning, create a hunger in me, O God, that I may know you and the power of your resurrection in the name of Jesus.
that desire to know Jesus the more, that desire to wait upon Jesus the more, grant it unto me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm longing for you. Lord, I'm willing, my Father, to go the extra mile for you in the name of Jesus. Birth a hunger and a thirst in me for that which matters. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now you are going to say, Father, please bring me into the new things you have for me. Let me not lag behind in the name of Jesus. Father, please bring me. Lord, I'm praying, oh God, that you will bring me into the new things that you have in store for me spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, in my business, in my marriage, in my career, in the name of Jesus Christ. Please bring me into that new thing that you have in store for me. Let me, Lord, lag behind. Hold me by the hand, my Father. Cause me to follow you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I wait upon you. Direct me and guide me and lead me in Jesus. Jesus' name, we have prayed. Finally, you are going to say, my father, help me to stay true and focused till I reach my destination, that Satan will not strike track me till I get to heaven, that I will finish well and finish strong every day moving forward in the name of Jesus. Shall we lift our voices and pray? Help me, my father God, to make it to the end that I will not be a victim, I will not be a prey, I will not be a casualty. Help me, my Father, to make it home safely, to stay true and focused, to keep moving forward every day, every hour, in the name of Jesus, moving forward in your power, moving forward at your command, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I will not run this race on another man's track, and Lord, may I hear you say to me, Lord, may, I, may we hear you say to every member of Jesus' sanctuary, oh, mighty Father, that well done, Thou good and faithful servant, enter into the rest of your Lord. Everlasting Father, we say thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we want to say thank you for your word today. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. And Lord, as we have shared your word today, let your word fight, take root in our hearts. Let it be nurtured by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may we all bear fruit forward in the name of Jesus. Moving forward into your power, into your glory. And as we enter into the second half of this year, let it be true progress. Let it be true power. Let it be true grace. Let it be true mercy. Thank you, eternal Father. All glory and all honor be unto your name. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. And the church of God said, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.